All right, welcome everyone to another episode of the Collector Car Stories podcast on CollectorCarCanada.ca. Uh, just a reminder, we also have the Car Reviews podcast where every car available on the site is reviewed by video in addition to the detailed listings you find there. Today, we have a real treat. Uh, you can see we're surrounded by some pretty glorious vehicles. Uh, today, I introduce my friend Sonny. Sonny, welcome to the podcast. and. What do you have to say for yourself sitting in front of all these prizes? Hi, everybody. How are you today? Um, I'm just glad I could help Dave and be along with the ride for his uh, you know, show. Right on, Sonny. We're glad you're with us. Um, I'm not really sure where to start when I look ar- around at everything that's in, in, this, in your garage with us. Not everything is on camera, of course. We'll, we'll go through all the cars through the video. But uh, we're sitting in a garage that's certainly um, uh, worthy of the cars that are in it. Some might think it looks a little unfinished. Why don't you tell us about the origins of the garage and what you ha- where it sits today and what you have planned for it? Um, we bit, built this garage about three and a half years ago. I was starting to get my handle on a few cars here and there, and I thought, I need some more space. So I right. got plans for this garage, and I thought at the time it's... Plenty of space. So just to be clear, we're, we're on effectively an outbuilding at your home. Correct. I guess the house is, what, 50 feet away? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, decided to put up the garage, and that was it. We're about, I figure, 50% done. 50% done. Because yeah. we got, you've, you've poured a concrete floor. I mean, I, the structure's in place. Is, uh, there's heat running in here, I think. Uh, no, not currently. Okay. It's well, not, we, we have the outdoor heat today, of course. But no, we have uh, we do have a heater in here now. But the the garage concrete floor is plumbed for uh, in floor heat, and then you know we gotta add the boiler system. Obviously, insulate the building, put in a second floor loft. My plan is to put three hoists in the back uh, for storage to open up the space a little bit. Big plans, big plans. But but you've been storing your collection in this garage for what? Th- you probably last three winters. Yeah, three winters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. But yeah, the loft sounds exciting. Originally, Sonny and I met each other in a car club, appropriately enough. And I think of him as a 928 person, a Porsche 928 person. Uh, I come today and it reinforces that, I guess you have two two more Porsche cars and you can't see it on camera. We'll walk around, but there's a, Ky- a Safari Cayenne behind me. But um, the Targa GTS, I think we'd say, right? Is that a 22 behind us? 24. Tw- well, it's a 24. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm thinking of when you ordered it. I remember when you ordered it. Correct. But you had to wait a little while. Uh, yeah, just about two years. Just yeah. a shade under two years. Yeah. So it's one of your most recent acquisitions. I think you picked it up last summer, was it? No, I got it in the fall. Uh, September oh, last year. September of last year. So why don't you tell us a bit about how you came to decide to choose that car and what it's been like since you got it? Um, well, to be honest with you, I decided I wanted one. I wanted to try and get one for my my 50th birthday right uh, so i pre-ordered it when i was around 49 and it didn't make the <laughs> i'm birthday. doing the math <laughs> it didn't make the birthday but that's okay but, um when it came time to do the actual ordering i didn't really do much i told my brother i want to buy one of these cars it's the color i want what should i do with it and he said let me send you a build code so he logged in built the car online and basically just said here's your code this is what you order and and that's what i ordered how was it that you put your brother to work is he connected to the porsche world yeah he's he's a multi multiple porsche owner um has a you know i guess a race porsche sure and he tracks the car every other weekend and he's very knowledgeable in the newer porsches i was gonna say i think of you as a porsche person because that's how we met originally as i say but as i think of it i think this is the first time you bought a new one is that right correct Yeah, yeah yeah And it comes with some hoops to jump through, I guess, bordering through the dealership. Yeah, and a, and a long waiting period. Yeah, yeah. But I hear that shortening up today. Yeah, yeah. We sort of grew up in the same era of cars. What kind of influences, what were your influences in the car world as a kid? Without a doubt, my father. Okay. He was a, a car nut. It sounded like he bought himself a new kind of luxurious car every year or two. Uh, when he got to that point in his life where he could I guess he didn't when do he it at could, the start, right? right? Yeah. But even at the start when he couldn't, I, I sure. know I heard stories from my mom that, you know, he would show up with a new car and she's like, <laughs> you know, we I had three mouths to feed and you know, the usual story back in the day and yeah. you know, but he loved cars. Yeah. And his 
love of cars continued right to the end. So. No, one neat story you've told me about him that relates to cars, but I think he landed at Pearson Airport. Yep. And what did he see? 73 Mercedes S Class. He saw a Mercedes, what is that, 230S in 1973? Correct. So he didn't go to the dealership that day. No, but uh, I guess probably 40 years He made later. mental note. 40 years later, he got one. Oh, it was 40 years later. Something like that. Is that right? I didn't right. know. Is that long? Because before that time, I, you told me he's had, he'd had Cadillacs. and Lots and of Cadillacs. Need, need right. cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's a, I mean. So we still have that car today as a family. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're a, we're a country of immigrants. Here's this man, comes to start a new life in Canada. One child, married with one child, two more to come. And he knows he wants the car. Yeah. And he sort of makes mental note of it, and yeah. he, he darn, darn it, he got it before, uh, before time ran out. So that's a neat story. And as you say, car's still in the family. Yeah, we still have it. I guess uh, your mom lives nearby? Yeah, and that car's stored off-site uh, just down the road from here. What did you like as a teenager, like when you were getting your license? Whatever I could afford to drive, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. There, was, there wasn't really much of an option, uh-huh. right? What's cheap and drivable? You were buying your own cars then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. from 16. Yeah. Okay, so we see some of what you have today. I do know some of the cars you've had along the way. What, what cars have you had al- along your path to, to where you are today with cars? Started off with an, an 81 AMC Eagle. Eagle. SX4, coupe, Wait. all-wheel drive. So that was an Eagle. So that was like the four-wheel drive version of the Spirit then, right? The yeah, hatchback? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Right. An absolute piece of junk. So 81. So that was built before you had your license, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that was a, it was a really great car, actually. An 84 Volkswagen Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Phenomenal car. It's funny because Sonny and I trade car stories, uh, well, not really day-to-day, but certainly week-to-week. It feels like you still have a, a taste for GTIs and the Mark One and Mark Two GTIs. Yes. If you found the right one, maybe maybe you jump. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a couple of cars I thought you'd say that I know you've owned over the years are a Nissan 350. Yeah. And you had a BMW 745. Yeah. So your 350, I think they, those came out around 2000? 2003. 2003. Was, your, was yours an 03 model? 03. Yeah. Um, I was one of the early people in Canada to get that yeah. brand new car. Oh, you bought it brand new? Brand new. Yeah. I ordered it about two years in advance, 18 years. 18 oh, really? Eh? Yeah. I read a car and driver thing about this yeah. new 350 coming out, so yeah. I went to the dealer and said, I want one of these. Yeah. Right. Nice and early. Yeah. And then that... Uh, I don't know the body code for it. I know the previous one's E38, but the 7 Series BMW that replaced the E38, your 745. E65. Well known as the bangle butt, so yeah. the E65. Tell yeah. us about that one. Well, the 350Z was a fast car and a fun car, and I was too young for that kind of power. Uh-huh. Got in a little bit of trouble. Uh-huh. So it was time to change from a sporty type car to a sedan. So did you go from the 350 to 745? Yeah. yeah. So I decided I'm going to buy a sedan and yeah. pretend I'm going to get old and all grown up dignified and mature. All grown up, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was a great, it was a cool car. Uh-huh. It, was a, a, it was a dealer trade in after eight months. So I was going to say you bought that almost Almost new, right? brand new. Yeah. It was eight months. It had, yeah. I think, like 4,500 kilometers, like a demo model, essentially. Right. And uh, cool car. I want to talk about a lead balloon. Jesus. Okay. Dream, dream car didn't turn out to be? I just, it was expensive to maintain. Yeah. It was expensive to drive. It was just, eh. Well, Sonny and I kind of see eye to eye on cars. So I guess effectively, you, you, ha- you had that 745. I had its little brother, the 545, which was an E60. Yeah. So I should be able to remember E65. And... Now you have an E38, which is the seven series that preceded the E65. And I have an E39 five series. And I think our experiences are similar. Your experience with the E65 was like mine with an E60. Although I bought my E60 after it had depreciated, it was cheap. But it was fast, it was fun, but it was broken all the time. Yeah. And you had trouble the same way with the same generation of seven series. And uh, I think, you bought your E38 when it depreciated, and it's almost like free driving for you. I, my my E39, I might have paid a little more for it, but not a lot because it was older. 
What a great car. Yeah, rock solid. It feels, I don't think any car manufacturer will build a car as solid as though that generation, E39, E38 BMW. Yeah, and, and even the E46 right around the same time, solid cars. Uh, I personally think 2001 was the best year for BMW. Your E38 is a couple years older than that, but it was still the same car in 01. My E38? I'm sorry, your, yeah, your E30, E38. Yeah, it's a yeah. 99. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a 740i, right? 740 IL. IL. Oh, yeah, the long, long wheelbase. wheelbase. Long wheelbase, yeah. So it was the same in 01. So those I, are rock solid cars, but I mean, you go back to the old 70s Mercedes, and those things are tanks. Sure. Right? Like, sure, sure, sure. Right. Like the one your father got after all those years. Yeah. It's yeah. like a tank. Yeah. Right? yeah. And but that thing will probably still be around a thousand years from now. But BMW specifically, I really am of the mind that 2001 is the year. I must admit that Hoovy's Garage might have influenced me in planting that idea, but uh, I agree with him. I think it, it, those were a great era. Yeah. So we're getting closer to current times. I had the, I, a series of questions for you. How many cars did you own 10 years ago? Two. Two cars. Probably two. So probably a daily and, a, and one fun, fun car. car. Yeah. yeah. And 10 years later, here we are. We're sitting in your garage. There are nine vehicles in here right now. It's not the extent of your collection. Do you have a, a straight number for me on how many you own today? Depends on what you include, I guess. Yeah. Because there are uh, a couple of parts cars outside. I'm going to say functional running, 14, 15. 15, I would have guessed, I would have guessed, like that. I would have guessed 20. I might take then, inventory then, when we're done. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a good number for me. We're going to leave it at that. Okay, we'll leave it at that. And uh, so we covered the past, we covered the present. What does the future hold? Where are you, how many are you going to have in 10 years from now? Well, we're, we're tight on space now. Yeah. So oh, we got to kind of pair another building. We got to pair that back a little bit until we figure out the space. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. this, we got time, but time's on our side, so we, just, we have fun, and if the right deal comes along, we buy it. And yeah, it. I, I'm, right. I'm kind of going to touch on that next. Looking around your collection, I'm thinking the Target GTS is probably your most valuable car today, as it sits. Correct. And uh, what's your least valuable car as it sits today? Uh, 1988 Volkswagen Scirocco. Scirocco. And a 16 valve Scirocco. So, yeah, essentially the GTI, Scirocco GTI. Yeah, yeah. So this is something that fascinates me with, with the, what you like about cars. You're, you're not a car person who just goes to Porsche dealership, orders, and picks up a new 911. No. This 2002, an E10 BMW, it's kind of obscured by our seats, but uh, what is it, a 76? 76. 76. You bought this car, and what kind of shape was it in? Uh, scrap. Well, near almost ready for the scrap car. Uh, essentially scrap. There's no there's no rear bumper on it today, but it's been the body's been redone, and it's got a really nice new paint job on it. So it's not every like the other two guys who bought Target GTS picked up their Target GTS the same day as you did. They didn't rebuild a 2002. No, this this car is essentially brand new mechanically too. Yeah. yeah. Every single mechanical yeah. component on the car has been replaced. Yeah. Okay. So that that's what I think is really neat. Sonny is the kind of guy, he can go get himself a Target GTS to treat himself for his 50th birthday. I can't believe you're that age. I would, if you said 40th, I would have I, I gone Thanks, for it. Thanks, Dave. But, uh, I mean, it seems like every weekend you're updating our little WhatsApp chat with what your project is for the weekend. Yeah, it keeps me occupied. Yeah. Keeps something to do. Yeah. So just looking around at the cars that are in this garage, uh, I'll name them off and... I, I'll try to get it. I, I think I have a sense of how much involvement you've had with the cars. Like behind, and, and I'll get you to elaborate a little bit. Behind the GTS, is it, is it an 03 or an 02? 03. 03 Ferrari 360 Modena. And that's, I mean, that's almost as it was when it was new. That didn't need restoration. No. I can see you've been, you bought that two years ago, three years ago. Three years. I can see you've been very careful with it. Not, not a mark on it. And I think you got a great deal on that. I don't know exactly what you paid for it, but when you were looking I at it. I think you do, Dave, because I asked you. Oh, that, I said, but is, time, does this look like a deal to you? At the time, I remember you looking at it, but I think you did really well with that one. And now we've, we've just covered, I always call them E10s, the BMW 2002s. I always call them E10s because 2002 gets confused with the year, the, the model year. Uh, and then in front of that, I think it's badged, if there's a badge on it. 
It's a, it's a BMW 325, but it's upgraded to a three liter engine out of a BMW 330, both from E46. Correct. What involvement did you have with the uh, upgrades in that car? Uh, that one actually I bought with a uh, blown engine. Okay. Right? So, so a 2.5 liter out of the factory. Right. And it was, uh, and it was I guess, 186 timing, horsepower. Timing went out and yeah. you know, it was the bent valves and so. You know, I so you bought a, you basically bought a roller there, right? Yeah, yeah. not much, and yeah. so I'm you know I bought that, and I had an engine that you I already had an engine. I had an engine that I picked up from a, a person who had a nice car that had been rear ended. Yeah. So I bought the engine from them for um, a few hundred bucks, and mm-hmm. back of the pickup truck, brought it home, put it on engine stand, tore the engine down, went through the whole thing. You did that yourself though. Yeah, did that in the garage. See, that's that's yeah. way beyond me. <laughs> so anyways, got that back together, yeah. hoping it would run. Yeah. Just put it in that car, and it ran. And it I drives. mean, I was raving about the 01 BMWs. I, I've had, I'm on my third one. My first BMW was a 2001 BMW 330. So same engine as you've got in that. Mine was a sedan, but it was just so smooth. Yeah, not very, super powerful, no, but it's, not lazy, it's not, but just so smooth for, nice it, for cars. inline six. They're nice yeah. little cars. Yeah. Right? The, the BMW 3 Series today, it doesn't hold a candle to that. No. Okay, and then in the back corner, there are two Porsche 928s, both in red. I, can, I know the cars a little bit. One's an original body. I think it's an 82. That's correct. So that'd be a 928S. Just 928. 928, no S. Base car. Okay, and then in the corner, it's an S4. I don't know if it's an 87 or an 88. 88. It's one of the two. It's an 88 S4. Yeah. So I know you didn't buy those at the top of the market. I know you didn't buy them brand new. How did you come, to, come, to, come across those cars? The 928 always fascinated me. Me too. Right? Like yeah. There's something about it. And I, actually, I can tell you, I know exactly what there was about it. Was it? Do you? As a kid, I had a, a, a I guess, one of those plaque pictures. Right. And it said... Like on your bedroom wall? Yeah. Yeah. Justification for a higher education. Right, right, right. And right. it had the five cars and the five car Yeah, garage. there was a, what, a, a Testarossa in there? Testarossa. Cor- probably a Corvette. Corvette. Uh, e30, E30 convertible. Oh, yeah. One of, uh, and... BMW E30. Yeah, yeah. Nine tw- and 928. 928, yeah, okay. Right. Okay. So it's, you know, just I, I have a somewhat similar story, but this podcast is about you, not me. I won't bore the audience with mine. But uh, which one have you had longer of the two? The 82. The 82. Yeah. And how did you find, what kind of condition was it in when you found it? The tree had fallen across the front of it. Okay. It had been sitting for couple of years okay right. and is it something you drove by all the time no no, no. it was actually at a, a work conference in chicago okay cruising kijiji used cars <laughs> right you're and, supposed to go drink with all your conference yeah, mates <laughs> i don't do that right? that's not my thing so yeah yeah i was just sitting there and you know saw what, it, what, I saw what, the geography, ad. what geography were you looking at locally for your, where yeah, you live yeah, yeah, yeah where okay. I live. so i saw the kijiji ad and i messaged the guy and he, an hour or two later he messaged me back i said i'm actually landing at pearson Right, um, seven o'clock. You know, can I come by and look at the car? And that's yeah. what I did. Yeah. I landed, went over there, looked at the car, bought the car. So with that damage, he was probably ready to move it along. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Was it running at the time? It, no. No. But okay. there was two cars. You had to take that car and a parts car. A parts nine twenty eight. Yeah, I had to take them both. Okay. Right. So. You probably took them that night. No. no. <laughs> you had Next, to go back. No, yeah, I had to go back. Right? <laughs> Okay, so not running and front end damage from the tree, I presume. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I bought a hood and a fender, changed them, and, set, and got the front end painted. And Sounds so simple. Right? Got the engine. And what I about actually did a lot of the engine on that car. How about getting it running? What was that? Um, what was involved there? Fuel in, fuel injection. I changed all the relays, all the ground. That's when I got onto Renlist. Right. Learned about Renlist and learned about the support for the 928s and the group there. And so not everyone in the audience will know about that. Renlist. Well, I guess we call it a forum yeah. where owners of Porsches generally, and they, they, they segment it by model, I yeah. suppose. Uh, people share their stories about the problems they're having with the cars. People who've encountered it before, they share their solutions and it's a really constructive environment. And, and it's incredible how fast the response is. Yeah, there. people so want to help. I would put stuff that's, on. That's a great car I would, community I would thing. Put people want to help. I would put stuff on there and within a couple hours, I'd have a list of things I'd have to go check, yeah. and when I next time I had some time in the garage, boom, it's boom. the kind of thing that if at the end of your day at work, you decide, oh, in a couple hours I can do a couple hours of work yeah. on the car. You put your problem in just before you leave work. By the time you're ready to get onto your car, you got, got your answer. You're yeah, ready to go. Exactly. So yeah, 
I, so, as I say, great thing about the car community, we always want to help each yeah, other, so yeah. it's fun. So got the car started and running yeah. and drove it around a bit and well, not a bad car. So. That, that odometer, it's six digits, but it's got, it shows a really low mileage, right? Yeah, I, and I have no idea. What but doing. you've always assumed that it's incorrect, but now you're starting to think, boy, this is a pretty good car, maybe it is correct. You know, I, I actually, when I was getting some work done to it, yeah. that I couldn't do myself, yeah. because I didn't have the equipment, and it was on the hoist, and the mechanic's like, this is a really good car. Clean underneath. Goes, this is a really clean, good car. Yeah. I know, I bought it for almost scrap value. And, yeah. Right. I did reach out to the guy who last had it, and he said he left it at a well-known Porsche independent shop. Oh, you've right, told me this. As, story. as for scrap, and that's the last he saw of the car. Right, right. And he questioned how I got it with an ownership, and I said, oh, I bought yeah. it for my guy, so. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then there's the S4, sorry, what was it, 87 or 88? 88. 88. Yeah. Uh, and where did that one, how did that one fall into your lap? Somebody know bought it, and then got. Oh, I know this Got story, scared yeah. at the potential cost of didn't he get an estimate in the twenty eight thousand dollar range that's bang on yeah right so he, uh, he took it to a very well known and reputable uh independent porsche specialist a, a, a shop that i've used and, and based on your referral and, and, and i'm really happy you referred them they're, they're fantastic people yeah and if they said this is what the car needs to get it back to get it a just one, right to yeah. get it perfect that is what the car needed to get it. So he got scared. He wasn't really a car person, was he? He is. He's got some yeah. cool cars. He's got a Maserati convertible. He's Ooh. got a <laughs> be big work He's got an that. old Toyota Supra. Oh yeah. Uh, 88 Toyota Supra. That's like right. a museum car. It's spectacular yeah. actually. Uh, an old Camaro, 60s Camaro. Oh wow. Right. So he's got some yeah. cars. Yeah. Right? But anyways, he, he loved the 928, I always wanted one. Bought that this one. Uh-huh. And then Got that $28,000 repair estimate. Cold feet. And, and I, maybe his wife or someone said, get rid of the car. Yeah. Right? And you saved him. Yeah. I bought the car. <laughs> right? And I was pretty fair. Yeah. Right? Good. So. Good. And then, I, you know, I, I had the list of what it needed. So that made yeah. it even easier. Just I copy just, and paste I, in a rent list. No, I just pinpointed <laughs> right out of the gate the most important things. Sure. Right? And targeted them and bought the parts and went at it. And so, by the spring... I know you're friendly with that shop. Have you have you told them about that? No. Do they know about that? No. no. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll keep it to myself next right. time I'm in there. Right. And then, not in the camera's view, there's a 1990, I think it is, BMW E30, so 325i. I. Yep. Four door. Correct. Uh, and there's something about the modification. There's a modification in that. Uh, it's been lowered on Bilstein and H and R. It's got. Uh, you know, it used to be an automatic car. A lot of the manuals, when I was looking for a BMW 30 were really beat up and rusty. and The abused. manuals. Yeah, abused. Yeah, yeah. But this was a clean, one-owner, automatic car. Uh -huh. So, I, you know, it's not that difficult to convert it, so I converted it. So you did the conversion yourself, yeah, right? Yeah, well, me and me and my friend mechanic. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember that. I, I remember it's, we, about six of us, six yeah. of us buddies, a couple of years ago, we threw an impromptu cars and coffee. In the heat, the height of the pandemic, we decided no one's going to stop us from getting together in a parking lot and looking at cars. And you were really keen on me driving that car. Yeah. I wasn't quite sure why, but I thought, okay, well, I got to take it around the block. And the gearbox in it, I, I've had E46 manuals. So I've had BMW manual transmissions and my E39 BMW actually has an E36 M3 gearbox in it. Right. Um, shifter, at least. But there was something about that gearbox in that car. Where did the gearbox come out? Do you know? Was it a BMW? It came, yeah, it came out of another BMW. Another E30? Another E30. Yeah. Eh? Um, but I sent it to a well-known, a really good transmission shop. Yeah. And had them split the case, go through the gears, clean it all up, do all the seals. It just right? felt so uh, smooth, firm and smooth yeah. and no play at all. Yeah. Maybe you were well, going gear to the gear. The flywheel was shaved seven pounds on top yeah. of that and then Saks performance clutch. Yeah. Then, okay. And then uh, last one while we're seated, we'll get up and take a look around, but... Um, and we'll see all of the cars, whether you can see them in the camera or not. But there's a 2008 Bentley Continental GT Speed. Correct. Which you would have bought pre-owned and the whole plan, I think when you bought that, being pre-owned, you'd get your hands on it right away while you were waiting for the GTS. Correct. The so GTS I, I came, I, on, came in, but here's the Bentley. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted something to hold me over while I'd ordered the GTS and I was kind of... Yeah getting it antsy and they yeah. kept extending how long it's going to be sure. so you know happened upon a, what i thought was a fair price on a good low mileage clean 
car and you know, I said, and yeah, I, it's so nice. But you liked it enough. It's, it's so nice. You liked it enough that you held on to it when yeah. the GTS yeah. came. Yeah. Any road trips in that Bentley? Yeah. I've done a few. My my wife, you know, give her blessing because she allows this to happen. <laughs> um, you know, she took it actually on a work trip just this past you know, a month or so. Right. But I took it a couple of years ago down to You were talking about that Washington, earlier. Washington, she drove, she drove right to Target in the Bentley, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. That would have attracted some attention. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, me and my buddy drove to Washington, D.C. for a work event. Yeah. And uh, it's a great trip. So much better than flying. Cars rock solid. Yeah. It's so fast. Yeah, yeah. It is a very fast car. Any trouble with the heat down in the south of the border? No, no. 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 But yeah. it, it, it's quite the car. Yeah. And I still think it's a great value. I mean, oh, well, you're not going to lose on that car when you bought it. I you bought it three years ago. Today it's what sixteen years. You bought it when it was thirteen years old. Yeah, you, it's not going to depreciate much now. No, no, right. No. And it's a super clean one. You do see some; they're a bit thrashed, a yeah. bit beat up, but not that one. No. Okay, it's been a blast, Sonny. I really appreciate you doing this for us. I, I, I mean, you took time out of a work day for us, and uh, we had to we had to do some car moving around and all that good stuff. So thanks so much for helping us out. Well, I think our viewers are really going to like this episode of the Collector Car Stories podcast. We'll, we'll splice in a, f a little bit of video of some of your other cars throughout. Um, what did we leave out? What story did you want to tell? Did you have a crazy story you wanted to tell us? Anything like that? I have a lot of crazy car stories. <laughs> None of them that I wish to share on this podcast. This is the wrong place, is it? Absolutely. Okay, well, maybe after the camera shuts off. Um, so again, Sonny, our greatest thanks. We really, really enjoyed it. What a blast. Um, and it's hotter than heck today. Absolutely. <laughs> Part of the reason I asked you about the plans for your garage is that I know AC's in the plans, but it's yeah. not in yet. Yeah, insulation, air conditioning, yeah. all of that, climatize the whole building. Yeah. So. so don't forget, we do have the Car Reviews podcast as well, where every car available on the site is reviewed in video form. Uh, but thank you for watching this episode of the Collector Car Stories podcast. And we'll see you next week.